Yo, Adam Saxton with Gaina Cube, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what is Power BI Premium for those that may not be aware of it. Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, Power BI Premium. Why would I, why do I even need Power BI Premium? There are a couple of reasons and a couple of benefits that really make Power BI Premium take Power BI to the next level. And I know there are some folks that push back a little bit because there is added cost to this, but there are some key things that Power BI Premium can enable for your organization. If you're in a very large enterprise organization, Power BI Premium is, you're probably going to go down that road at some point. Let's talk about some of the benefits of Power BI Premium. So the biggest thing or the, the big thing that people look at with Power BI Premium is the sharing and collaboration aspect of it. What this means is that if I have a workspace that's backed by Power BI Premium, then I can utilize this for mass distribution of my content within my organization, potentially even outside of my organization. So what I'm talking about is content sharing, right? So if content is backed by Power BI Premium, that means users, non-pro users can get access to that content. So whether that's a published app, whether that's something that's shared from an app workspace, or if that's even a non-pro user that's listed as a viewer inside of an app workspace, if it's backed by premium, all of that is possible. That's a huge benefit, especially for large organizations. So if you, let's say you've got 10,000 users that are potentially going to be hitting Power BI, then if you back some of your content with Power BI Premium, you don't necessarily need to have a pro license for every user. And so that can really bring down the cost of Power BI. So that's a big reason for Power BI Premium, but there are some reasons that are not necessarily about the sharing and collaboration piece. There are some technical things that get lit up from a Power BI Premium perspective. When I think premium, I think scale, right? So typically your, your items that are available from a just a Power BI Pro perspective, if we want to really take those at scale from an enterprise perspective, that's really where Power BI Premium starts to come into play. So a big item is large models. So going past a one gig limit from a regular pro user or a Power BI free user, we could only publish a one gig data model to the Power BI service. With Power BI Premium, by default, I can go up to 10 gigs, but there's also the capability of going past that with large model support. So what that means is your actual Power BI data set could be as large in memory as your Power BI Premium node has memory. So a P3 has up to 100 gigs, so that's as big as your Power BI model could get, or roughly around there. You need some headroom for refresh, but you could get some pretty large models in there. Another thing to consider is that Power BI Premium can actually be deployed to a different region than what your home region is for Power BI. So if data residency is important to you, then you can take advantage of the multi-geo capabilities. And so, for example, I could have my Power BI home region inside of East US 2, and I could have my Power BI premium node inside of South Central. Or if I was a multinational company, maybe my home region is in the US somewhere, and then I could have my Power BI premium capacity sitting in like North Europe data region as well, just for compliance with like GDPR or things of that nature. Paginated reports is a capability that is enabled through the use of Power BI Premium. So if you're wanting to use Power BI paginated reports, Power BI Premium is going to be a requirement. This is one of the few items that is only available with Power BI Premium. So it's not available if you have Power BI Pro. That is something if you want to go to ideas.powerbi.com, there is an item you can vote up on that. I'll have that link down in the description below as well. As of the recording of this video, though, paginated reports are a premium only capability but they do offer a lot of powerful options for reporting, especially for some of those classic operational type reports where you got to print off a bunch of pages or, you know, have full control over pixel perfect reporting. From a data flows perspective, there's confusion that I get from people. Some people think, oh, data flows is a premium feature. It is not. You can actually use Power, or you can use Power BI data flows inside of workspaces outside of premium. But data flows does have certain capabilities that get lit up by having premium in your organization. If we think of like the enhanced 
compute, uh, we can look at some of the AI capabilities that get lit up from a data flows perspective, or even on the Power BI desktop side, those AI capabilities. Those are items that get serviced if we are backing our content with Power BI Premium. Embedding is another area where it, this is interesting from a Power BI Premium perspective is that you can embed without premium inside of your organization. So if I wanna embed inside of SharePoint or Teams, but going back to that licensing perspective, Power BI Premium allows those users consuming that embedded content to not have to have a pro license. It also does allow you for Power BI embedded itself. There's a lot of confusion out there. People want to know, well, if I have Power BI embedded, that means I have to have the Azure Power BI embedded SKUs. On the Azure side, Power BI Premium P SKUs cover it as well. Either one can be used for a Power BI embedded scenario. And then another thing to be aware of is that with Power BI Premium, your content that sits in a workspace, you can actually connect to that like you can any other analysis services item. You get what's called an XMLA endpoint. And really what this is, is just a connection string that you can use to connect to the data sets inside of Power BI Premium. So this could be Excel. This could be, you know, Management Studio or SQL Profiler. It could be a third-party BI reporting tool. I don't judge. It's fine. They can all be powered by Power BI, and it's amazing. All right, so that's what you get with Power BI Premium. Let me talk a little bit about licensing. I, I touched on it briefly, but one thing I want to make very clear, Power BI Premium is not a license. It is a subscription. Power BI only has two licenses as part of it, free and pro. From a user perspective, you have either a free license or a pro license. So Power BI Premium is not a license I assign to users. The free and pro I assign to users. Power BI Premium is for content. And so I assign workspaces to a premium capacity. It backs the content, not the users. It does enable some sharing capabilities so that you don't need to have pro licenses, but it is basically for the content itself and the workloads that are in your organization. There are different SKUs that are available from a premium or Power BI embedded perspective. And so on the Power BI embedded on the Azure side, you have what's called A SKUs, so A1 through A6. And on the premium side, you have EM1 through 3. And then you have the premium P SKUs, which is P1 through P3 at the time of this recording. To get that sharing and collaboration capability that I mentioned, where you don't need to have the pro license, you're going to need a P SKU. Those are the, those are the only SKUs that actually cover that. So an EM SKU and an A SKU won't cover that sharing and collaboration or license reduction piece. From an end user perspective, what does this look like? And honestly, from an end user, most of the time, they're not even going to know. They're not going to care about Power BI Premium. This is all about the actual, the content authors and the administrators of the organization to make sure that you can do that work at scale. The only real indication for end users that this is backed by premium is you're gonna see a diamond next to the workspace or next to the app that is just your clue that yes, this is premium. Outside of that, everything works the same. All right, so where do we start with premium? I get a lot of questions about, well, do I just need a P1? Do I need a P3? Like, how, do I need more than one of those? How do, we, how do I know which one I need? And I'm going to be really honest with you here. The only way to really know is you need to look at what your workload is going to be. So how many data sets are going to be in the premium capacity? How, how big are those data sets? What's the load that's going to be on those given reports and data sets? So what's the concurrency of those users? So those are all factors that come into play. What are the different workloads? Are we doing data sets? Do we have paginated reports? Are we running data flows? These are all things that need to be looked at. The only real way that you're going to know is you're going to have to do an actual load test to see how far that can go. The A SKUs are an option that you could use for doing that as it's, you know, you could pay for it from an Azure perspective and not be committed to the longer term payment. You just spin it up, do your load test, bring it back down. That is a good way to do it. But just know that the only way to really answer that question is to do that load test. If you don't do the load test, there are ways you could maybe guess at what it is. You could always start with a P1 and see what happens and you can always scale it up if you need to. But anything outside of doing that actual load test and understanding what exactly you're putting into that server, it's a guess. To get Power BI Premium, you're gonna have to go and purchase that from the Office 365 subscription area. If you're a volume licensed customer or someone that works with an account team, they can also assist you with getting that. But if you're just doing a direct buy, you're gonna do this through the Office 365 subscription area. And that's where you're gonna see the different premium capacities that are available. This is also where you purchase pro licenses. 
or other subscriptions from Office 365, like E5, things of that nature. Once you purchase through the Office 365 portal, what this is going to do is it's gonna allocate cores into what's called the vCore pool. So if you purchase a P1, you're gonna get eight cores in the vCore pool. If you purchase a P3, you're gonna get 32 cores. If you purchase four P1s, you're also gonna get 32 cores. From there, you can go ahead and actually create a node for premium, and that will take cores out of the vCore pool and use those, basically reserve those cores for that premium capacity. You can give it a name, you can assign who the capacity administrators are, who are the folks that can assign workspaces to this capacity, and then you just manage it from there. And then from a workspace perspective, the someone that can assign capacities can do that directly in the workspace settings, or you could do it in the admin portal from a capacity perspective. For those of you that are capacity administrators, just know that there is the Power BI premium capacity metrics app that you can go install. And this helps you at least see what's the resources, like what's going on with that premium capacity. And stay tuned to the Power BI blog for updates around that monitoring and metrics and all of that. They're always trying to make updates the Power BI team is always trying to make updates to that to make it more useful for you. All right, I know that was a lot of info. There is more about premium as well, more than I can fit into this video. So check out the documentation. I'll have links to that down in the description below. And then let's continue the conversation in the comments. I'll try and answer what I can. I wanna pass it off to you though. What do you think? Are you using premium? Does it sound like premium would be useful for you? What do you wanna see in premium? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.